today I'm gonna to be doing something a little bit different than what I normally do um, but my client has naturally gray hair and we actually are going to low light her hair this is gonna be a video that you absolutely want to check out Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my YouTube channel. My client has naturally gray hair and we actually are going to low light her hair instead of highlighting it, which is what I am so known for, my blondes and highlighting. But today we're gonna low light her hair. So if you have clients that are naturally gray or deal with wanting to grow in their natural color, so keep watching. So for her low light, we are gonna do Kenra 1N and 4N and just do equal parts with 20 volume and basically her low light is going to end up being the highlight um, almost in a way so in a normal situation you would be highlighting hair um, and adding in low you know adding in low lights as depth but in fact we're actually switching the two and her highlights are going to be the less and we're actually going to do a lot more low lights so um, again we're just going to do equal parts of this and this will be our low light So for her highlight, we're actually going to do Shades EQ 9B, 9P, a third of our formula will be that, and then two thirds of our formula will be crystal clear, and I'm actually going to use the new um, developer that is a more precision application, because we are putting these in foils, it helps to have it be a little bit thicker. So let's mix this up, I'm going to do, like I said, a third of our formula, 9P, 9B, two thirds shade uh, clear, and this will ensure a very like sheer tone for um, her highlights. So we did about two ounces total and then two ounces of the developer. So you guys can see that consistency with that developer. It makes it a little bit more gelatinous and so much better for foil applications. This is our starting canvas. You guys can see she's got her natural color here, kind of at the top. We've done some low lights before, and before we actually used to bleach out for her highlights, but we don't do that anymore because you guys can see it brings up a lot of those underlying pigments and that warm tone. So we don't do that anymore, but that's why I'm gonna use a uh, kind of glaze formula for her highlights, so we're kind of toning that all while working at the same time. All right, so we are starting kind of here. I'm gonna work my way down. We're just doing a partial and then I'll work my way forward. But um, this is kind of gonna be our first highlight piece. And you guys can see this is where we had previously lightened it with lightener. And you guys can see kind of those warm tones that are still in there. So we're gonna tone this out and this is gonna be our highlight piece. But basically um, that Shade ZQ formula is gonna to help tone that and separate it from the rest. She wants to add a little bit more of her natural color in this time. So that's why I like using Shade ZQ because like I said, it's gonna to tone it and basically do the job of two steps in one, um, eliminating those pieces so that they're out of the way and also uh, toning it down too. All right, so then our next piece that we're gonna do, we're gonna do a low light. And pretty much I used to do it like uh, two to, like basically two to one. So two low lights for every highlight we did, but today we're gonna do about one to one. So with her low lights, I still wanna keep a lot of that natural in there. So we're just gonna kind of do some baby low lights in there today, instead of a baby light, a baby low. Uh, but this is kind of something fun and different and it'll keep it really natural for her, um, kind of less chunky feeling and uh, more on the natural side where it looks like these darker dimension pieces are just growing in. So the big thing, you just wanna make sure that you're fully saturating those pieces really well. Um, obviously this is a very dark formula, so just be careful, you don't wanna get bleed marks down here either. Um, and so yeah, it's just good to ensure that. But this is one of her highlight pieces. You guys can see that we had light before. There's a little bit of warmth in there, but not too bad. But um, because she wants to keep a lot of her natural and lightness in there, this is really important to make sure placement is really good, um, especially for, this is almost like a reverse highlight again, right? But we wanna make sure that the place is really good. And again, I'm just using kind of that shade ZQ. This is all gonna get toned out and it's just gonna kind of enhance the gray that she has on her roots. So now for her next section, I'm gonna skip this whole section because again, this is a little bit of lightness. We don't wanna color that at all. Um, and then the next section I'm gonna take will be more of like a baby low light type thing. So it's just kind of really key to know your placement and to understand where you're putting depth and where you're keeping lightness. 
so that the client has dimension and it doesn't feel chunky, uh, but it's, it's just kind of a little bit different than a highlight, so you just gotta kind of pay attention to placement and things. So around her hairline, normally these pieces I would pick up and have be our baby lights, baby highlights, um, and just get really detailed around the hairline, but for her, she doesn't like it when she pulls her hair back and sees so much gray. So we actually blend in some low lights. So these are almost like baby lows around her face. So I always pick up these pieces. Now the thing that you have to be really careful of is this is permanent color that you're putting in. So if you get a bleed mark, you can get a total spot. Um, so you just have to be really careful and really precise. But again, here's like my little tiny piece right here. I'm gonna throw it in a foil and just kind of getting these little baby pieces in there will really add this dimension around her hairline. We'll clip this one up and we're gonna do one more little section down here. She's got all these kind of like little baby hairs and stuff so we'll clip this up because again we don't want it to be solid black up there, just really light and subtle. Um, so we'll pick this little section up here. And again, every client's hairline should be customized. Um, nobody has the same hairline, nobody has the same baby hairs, um, and even clients' hairlines are gonna look different every time they come in. So making sure to really customize these hairlines and just give them this extra detail makes a huge, huge difference in the way that the hair looks. And I always lock my foils in place right here so that we ensure that we're not getting any like uh, looseness or that it's gonna slip. So now we're gonna work around her actual hairline right here and again we're doing those kind of baby lowlights and then right behind it I'll actually do a highlight. So it's keeping that contrast in there um, so it's not like black around her hairline but also giving it that dimension back in there. And I love using these brushes from Framar. Um, they're very precise and it allows me to get in there and stay controlled with the product um, and not feel like I'm moving anything around. All right, so this is gonna be our little highlight section here. And you guys can see I'm taking a really wide section. Um, obviously I would never do this with lightener, but because we're just kind of toning down that section, I wanna make sure I'm getting all those little baby hairs, making sure to knock out a lot of that warmth. Um, and that thicker section is gonna be totally fine because again, this is more almost like a toner. It's not um, lightener. So if we were doing lightener, I would never suggest taking that big of a section, but we can kind of do it in this instance. So then right behind it, um, I do all diagonal backs on her uh, sides here. You guys can see I did the whole mohawk going down and then we do all diagonal backs until we kind of reach about this point. So I'm just gonna do some really kind of fine baby lights break up that line. You guys can see this was an existing low light in there, um, but by keeping it really fine weaves, it allows it to grow out really nicely and it doesn't feel chunky, which can happen in colors like this because obviously we're doing such a dark low light and so much contrast. So we just gotta make sure it doesn't look chunky. She doesn't want Corella de Bill chunks going down her, going down her head. So um, making sure to do it really baby fine and just kind of keep that in mind. Again, placement is pretty key uh, in this kind of color. result you guys can just see how blended it is and how everything just kind of really flows together and it looks so natural but it also has kind of that pop of fun and it doesn't feel like old lady hair so nobody wants to feel like old lady hair this is something that's really fun and again this is great for any kind of client who is transitioning or just wants to add something a little bit more fun to their gray hair color Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful for you. Like I said, this is something totally different than what I normally do. Kind of low lighting gray is something very different. But like I said, if you have a client that is wanting to transition to gray or um, has a client that wants to add a little bit more pop into her natural gray color, this is a really great technique and I hope that you guys found it helpful. Make sure to hit the subscribe button below. If you want to see more videos like this, I'm sharing all my techniques that I use in the salon on my clients every single day and you're not going to want to miss 
awesome. So make sure to hit the subscribe button and make sure to come say hi over on Instagram. Send me a DM. Let me know what you guys thought of this video and I can't wait to meet you. I'll see you guys next time.